Good morning, and welcome back to Margin. This morning, we're going to talk about the intangibles and the tangibles of your education. So let's jump right into it. So as we continue our theme through education, but before we start discussing school choice, school loans, student debt, as well as marketable fields, it's going to be important to actually look at valuing the tangibles versus the intangibles of education before you make the decision to pursue higher education. Now, an intangible is something without a physical substance and something tangible is something with a physical substance. Now, this is based on Webster's definition, but I believe education has both tangible and intangible benefits as well as drawbacks. So an example of this may be the trade-off cost uh, of getting further educated. You could miss out on an opportunity or it could um, create an opportunity. Uh, it, it could go both ways. Now, let me preface this by reminding you that it's important to never stop learning and to always be looking for ways to grow and ways to improve. But this continued growth will not always be in the form of a classroom. And in fact, oftentimes it's likely for it to be through life experience as you as you gain in uh, experience through making mistakes, learning and pivoting and reapplying and succeeding in various aspects of life. Now, the knowledge you gain can be great for the time and place to apply that knowledge, but you only gain wisdom through actually experiencing and carrying out that knowledge that you've gained. You can't just gain knowledge and not apply it. You have to gain knowledge and apply it in order to have wisdom or experience with that information, with that knowledge. So you can't gain that wisdom or applied knowledge without actually getting out there and doing it. So many take the proverbial plunge to figure out the field that they want to go into by enrolling into classes that may be a good fit for them. Maybe they were told that they would be good fit for them. Then funding their college career using student loans without necessarily having a plan bad plan. <laughs> That's a bad plan. That lack of planning often leads to people meandering, not realizing the expense of time, talent, resources, and energy that are being used possibly in the wrong direction. So this is where a plan comes into play in the form of vision casting for your life. In this theme, we have thus far gone through the benchmarks uh, that should be hit in your 20s and your 30s. Now, part of this process was putting together a plan based on the vision that you have for your life. So this must come first in the process of you figuring out what school to attend, what major or certification to pursue, and how long and how much to invest, as well as where it leads to from a career standpoint. Now, you can only plan for what you can plan for. You can only, you know, plan for what you know to plan for. And so by at least having a direction, you'll be able to gain focus on that direction. And that direction, that focus can be assigned or reassigned for another pursuit in the future. But you need to at least have a preliminary plan from a standpoint of the path that you're going to follow. Now, the path that you're going to follow will help you determine the level and to what extent you need to formalize your education for said career path. Now, this is not intended to discourage you from formalized education. Uh, instead, to encourage you to not let your formalized education seemingly trap you. And what I mean by trap you is spending your time and your resources on a curriculum that has not first been aligned with what you ultimately want in your life. Now, I've said before, school is a very expensive place to figure out what you want to do with your life. Now, this applies whether that be a trade school, some type of certification, or some kind of bachelor or master's program. And I see far too many people 
go through the process of going to school without actually having a plan, carrying large amounts of student loan debt due to spending longer amounts of time in school than the specific certification or degree actually required. Uh, while not actually valuing the opportunity cost of where their time, talent, resources, and energy could have been uh, or maybe should have been applied otherwise in order for them to advance that vision that they set forth. Now, I know it can be so easy to be enamored by a certain school uh, that you want to attend. It can be so easy because you got that letter of acceptance uh, because of the prestige of the school or because of its location or even because of its campus. Uh, but you can't be pulled in by those things. So just remember, you will be spending a very small amount of time at that school. As long as you, of course, follow, follow a curriculum and don't become a, a career student, uh, you will spend a, a small amount of time at that school. So don't allow for it to follow you in the form of lost opportunity and student loans before you have the chance to make sure that it's the correct path for you. Now that all said, if you choose a field that is in high demand and requires a set of education, set of knowledge, and you are pursuing that, it can make a great amount of sense to attend a formalized education path. Now I understand, of course, that most of us who attended college probably went right into college from high school. And so at that point, we we're trying to figure out life. We we're trying to figure out what we wanted to pursue and therefore had no specific idea of the vision that we had or wanted to have uh, necessarily for our lives. But unfortunately, there are far too many people who go to school for a specialty that wasn't theirs in the first place. They're chasing a program that's someone else's plan and not necessarily their own plan for their life. So this is why I believe that so many people take so much longer to get their degrees. I believe that at this point, uh, it is said that the bachelor's degree uh, has now surpassed six years on average to, to get that degree. Now, although I always recommend that you never stop learning, you still need to be careful about the extent of the form and format of your education to ensure that you are not gaining more and more knowledge as a career student with nowhere to apply that knowledge. So other than the cost of school, the time commitment, and well, prematurely signing up for classes because it is the logical next step and not because you have a plan, what about the tangible and intangible considerations otherwise? So if you first figured out the career requirements, would the position you are hired into provide an education stipend or reimbursement plan instead of you first getting your certification or degree going into the debt and, and hoping that they actually pay you for that. Sometimes it's hard to know which needs to come first, but it's worth asking the question. And also seeing and asking if you've made sure that the track you're going to be on will honor your time and dedication in school in the form of that, edu uh, of that income for that education. So if not, have you considered the time away from building a business or maybe gaining an experience in some other way or opportunities otherwise? And if you are going back to get educated in a certain area, consider your spouse if you have a spouse or your children if you have children and your availability to them being limited because of that. Now, you may also consider the proximity to the education source and how realistic it may be. So there are additional costs, tangible costs um, to getting your education and many people don't factor in, you know, uh, the additional costs of childcare and other aspects in order to uh, get that education. And you may not factor in the strain on relationships, the opportunities, the financial constraints and whether um, you're thinking through those components. So far too many people don't ask critical questions and end up with a training, some kind of certification or a degree 
that they have since decided not to pursue. They haven't decided to pursue a career associated to that specific certification. And unfortunately, many have the student loans to prove that to be true. Now, before continuing on your path of education, consider what the next step of education is and whether it makes sense, whether it makes sense to get a degree so that you can move into management in the future or promote otherwise, whether it's a requirement to get into the field you want to go into and pursue, or whether you can get that degree after you start there if they have a program to pay for your education along the way and whether you can actually afford to go to school without taking on long-term um, costs uh, according to doing that. So I would encourage you to go through the process of seeing what the break-even cost is for that education and the cost benefit in regards to the field that you're going into. So my call to action today comes down to looking at the tangible and intangible aspects of pursuing further education and whether this needs to be formal or maybe it needs to be informal. Looking closely at the why and the substantiation behind pursuing higher education without just doing that because it's an ought and a should. Please do like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you're reminded to come back on a daily basis and improve in managing your personal finances. Thank you for your time. Enjoy your day, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.